beams of white light from the late Cretaceous sun filtered down into the endless blue ocean. Flickering and fading in obscure beams before the light can penetrate no further, collapsing into the deep. The exact location is situated in what will one day become the North African nation of Morocco. But 66 million years ago, the landscape was quite different. This specific spot is a warm, open ocean, far from land. Faint shapes twisting and whirling in the depths could be the shadows of marine megafauna. Or perhaps not. When all is a deep blue, 360 degrees around you, it is hard to tell. One of these shapes trickles up from the depths, massive in proportions. But this is clearly not one animal. Flickering and shimmering in the mid-afternoon light is a school of fish. Specifically, Encodus, a species of ray-finned fish not too distantly related to modern-day lancetfish. The school approaches the surface in large numbers, twisting in convoluted shapes as its sharp-toothed individuals pick off detritus and small creatures from the lightly lapping waves. These fish need to be wary, however, and team up in shoals for a good reason. Predators. Shimmering scales and abnormal shapes have caught the keen eyes of aerial predators hawking over the waves. The Nyctosaurid pterosaur, Barbaridactylus, these masters of the oceanic skies whirl over the waves. Their upward-turned beaks, the perfect tools for scooping fish out of the water, like a skimmer or gannet. Their bullet-like diving causes the school to scatter in panic, as more and more encodas are snatched from the waves, a smorgasbord of nutritious food presenting itself freely to those strange aerial reptiles. Some of the fish scatter deeper to avoid the jaws of their attackers from above, but this proves to be equally risky. Below, other shapes have begun to drift above, intrigued by the commotion happening on the surface. Sharks. These species of squally corax, five meters in length, and similar in form to many of today's mako or reef sharks, their sleek, imposing forms can be seen rapidly smashing into the shoal of Encodas, dispersing them, gobbling up mouthful after mouthful of unfortunate fish. This continues for a good while, undisturbed. The pterosaurs and sharks have it made with occurrences like this. Out in the open ocean, it's important to arrive early at sites like these as Morocco's abundance of marine piscivores means competition is high. Soon the predators outnumber their prey, and the shoal is dwindling. The occasional escapee can be seen safely wandering from the scene unharmed, but the remaining few are trapped in the frenzy. Half-eaten corpses and glittering scales shower down into the depths as the pterosaur dives become less and less frequent, and the sharks start to retreat to the depths. It would seem, however, that another predator is yet to have its fill of the bounty, and it's not after the small fry. Like something out of Jaws, a huge open mouth protrudes from the murky depths, rows of teeth betraying the presence of a colossal marine apex predator the streamlined shape, clearly that of a reptile and not a fish, encloses its jaws around a shark and bursts from the waves like a rocket leaving the planet. The bewildered shark, now suspended a good two meters above the water at least, thrashes in fear. As the huge reptile releases its grip, the pterosaurs have scattered and the lucky sharks have now long gone. The shark is tossed into the air and lands several meters away from the launch site, only to appear again a few seconds later when it is bashed into the air by the giant reptile. 
Upon its grisly return to the disturbed surface of the water, blood pools up in the frothing surface as the giant reptile, Thalasso Titan, claims its prize, tearing chunks out of the poor squally corax filling its belly. As it feeds, it becomes strikingly clear what this animal is, a mosasaur. These giants of the seas were the top marine predators in the late Cretaceous, and Thalasso Titan rules the roost here. It is colossal, unfathomably so. Held out horizontally, ripping at the dead shark in the waves, its massive tail thrashing from left to right. It is clearly built for this lifestyle of ambushing prey from below, similar to the way some modern-day marine apex predators feed leaving a handful of cartilage and gristle behind for the scavengers. The giant mosasaur sinks nonchalantly back into the deep, ambivalent to the destruction in its wake. It might look ecologically barren at first sight, but these seas hold one of the most species-rich marine ecosystems known to science. Towards the end of August 2022, a remarkable new species of marine reptile was described from the Ouled Abdoun Basin near Casablanca, Morocco. Fossils uncovered in the region include beautifully preserved jaws and skulls, which indicate that this creature, named Thalassotitan atrox, was a mosasaur, a new member of a widespread late Cretaceous group of marine apex predator reptiles. The creature's name might give away something about its appearance before even looking at the fossil. Thalassotitan atrox roughly translates from Greek to English as cruel sea giant. Scientists estimate that this mosasaur would have grown to roughly between 9 and 10 meters in length when fully grown which would have made it one of the largest marine reptiles in the basin at the time, which would have been submerged entirely by ocean, giving rise to awesome new marine creatures, but more on those later. Upon studying the fossil skull and teeth, scientists learned that many of the lasso titan's teeth were either chipped, broken, or worn down. This isn't just a coincidence, or the result of the passing of time. This is evidence of wear and tear from the huge reptile's feeding habits. Thalasso Titan must have used its teeth as a primary weapon to hunt sharks, turtles, and even other mosasaurs, smashing them into the bodies of its unfortunate soon-to-be meals, causing immense damage upon the violent impact. Repeated use of these sharp teeth as weapons would have had a substantial impact on Thalasso Titan itself too, however, and many teeth would have been lost or damaged in the process throughout the creature's lifespan. Fortunately, we know that Mosasaurs would have been able to replace these teeth, much like a shark is able to. When mammals, for example, break or lose teeth, they aren't able to grow them back and many teeth have evolved high roots, or the ability to constantly grow existing teeth to combat this concern. Mosasaurs, however, would have been able to shed old teeth, ensuring that no matter how often they needed to use them to catch prey, there would always be a steady supply on the way if some of them were broken or lost. The Lasso Titan roamed the seas of Morocco 66 million years ago, in the late Cretaceous period. Specifically, it existed in the Maastrichtian Age, the very final slice of time that made up the Mesozoic Era. Elsewhere in the world at the time, other giant mosasaurs would have thrived in the oceans. Tyrannosaurus rex would have hunted herds of Triceratops, and the skies were filled with many strange species of pterosaur. It also would have been around to witness one of the worst disasters in all of planet Earth's history, the Chicxulub asteroid impact, famous for contributing heavily 
to the end Cretaceous mass extinction 66 million years ago. Prior to that, though, the Moroccan oceans belonged to Thalassotitan. As one of the largest predators uncovered in that area, scientists have deduced that it was likely the apex predator of its time and region. Perhaps as a baby, it would have been vulnerable to attacks from sharks and other mosasaurs. But once it reached adulthood, that was that. There were very few creatures in the Cretaceous seas that could have brought harm to a fully grown Thalassotitan, and it sat proudly at the top of the food web. Think of Thalassotitan as a prehistoric killer whale or a great white shark. It filled the same ecological niche as these modern-day apex predators, but on a bigger, less familiar scale. Although the story that opened this video was fictitious, it is truly awe-inspiring to imagine feeding frenzies taking place in the open oceans of Cretaceous Morocco in the same manner of the ones we see with sardines, sharks, gannets, and whales in the modern day. Only, when frenzies finish in today's open oceans, there usually isn't anything to prey on the sharks when they've had their fill. As we've already touched on, mosasaurs were an incredibly diverse group of marine apex predators that ruled the roost within the Cretaceous seas and oceans toward the end of the Mesozoic era. Thalassotitan had a very large family tree, and elsewhere in the world, at the time of its existence, swam many other species of mosasaur, some even larger than itself. Thalassotitan wasn't even the only mosasaur that swam in the Maastrichtian Moroccan seas either. Alongside it were over 10 other species that would have interacted with or been preyed upon by Thalassotitan. These included some very sizable species, including Prognathodon, Thalassotitan's closest relative, and Mosasaurus, star of the 2015 science fiction monster movie Jurassic World. Alongside these Mosasaurs were several other less well-known species, including Gaviali Mimas, Halosaurus, Carinodens, Pluridens, Xenodens, and Aramiasaurus. These species were all carnivorous, feeding on anything from fish to shellfish, turtles to sharks, mosasaurs to pterosaurs. Perhaps even the odd dinosaur or two would have met its end at the hands of a Moroccan mosasaur when trying to pass over stretches of water. But what was a mosasaur? Where did they come from? Extant from around 101 to 66 million years ago, mosasaurs are actually members of an existing order of reptiles that survived to modern day. Squamata. This is a massive order of modern reptiles, made up of snakes and lizards, making them the mosasaurs' closest living relatives. It is likely that the mosasaurs themselves evolved from a group of semi-aquatic lizards, the Aegialosaurs. Take an Aegialosaur and put it in a zoo's reptile house, and it wouldn't look too out of place amongst the monitor lizards in the neighboring tanks. Its exhibit would need much more water, however, and the lizard itself would look slightly different. Shorter limbs and a deep, paddle-like tail would set it aside from these modern-day species. But it was the giant apex predator mosasaurs that would arise from this humble stock, the lasso titan included. Hinged jaws and flexible skulls, adaptable for tackling prey items of many different varieties, is just one trait that mosasaurs share with modern snakes and many species were likely to have gobbled up their entire catches whole. What was this food, though? Well, whatever the giant reptiles could catch. For the biggest mosasaurs, 
such as Thalassotitan, Prognathodon, Mosasaurus, and North America's Tylosaurus. Anything and everything was on the menu, as long as it could fit in their mouths and didn't put up enough of a fight. This includes a banquet of readily available foodstuffs from the Cretaceous depths, including fish, both large and small, as well as sharks. Ammonites would have been taken, and fossil shells have been discovered with mosasaur puncture wounds from their crushing teeth. Marine reptiles, including hard-shelled turtles, would have been preyed upon, but these predators would have also taken bigger reptilian game. Both long and short-necked plesiosaurs, and other mosasaurs themselves, were not safe. Add to that the abundance of large seabirds and the odd dinosaur, and you've got a healthy, balanced diet of one of the most terrifying marine predators ever to live. Thalassotitan's ancient bones were dug up in the Ulad Abdun Basin, not too far from the major city of Casablanca in Morocco, in what is now Northwest Africa. It is a major site for phosphate sedimentary rocks and houses some of the most diverse marine paleofauna of anywhere in prehistory. The fossils in the basin span a length of 25 million years. Not all of the creatures would have directly coexisted in that time frame, but Thalassotitan would have been an imposing threat to anything that encountered it. Discluding the creatures we've already mentioned, many species of fish served as a bountiful food source for the area's megafaunal predators. Several species of pycnodont fish swam alongside the aforementioned sharp tooth and codis, but the real star of the Piscine show was Stratodus, a gigantic, slender, ray-fin predator, five meters in length. It went on to actually survive the end Cretaceous mass extinction, thriving in the relatively empty seas at the beginning of the Cenozoic era, where it, alongside select species of shark, would have dominated the ecosystem in the absence of marine reptiles. Sharks were exceptionally abundant in the basin, but only three genera coexisted with Thalassotitan in the Mastrictian. Ceratolamna, a small, sharp-toothed piscivore. Cretolamna, a potential ancestor of Atodus megalodon. And Squally Corax, who we met at the beginning of the video. Close relatives of the sharks were the skates and rays that could be found in the same areas as the Lasso Titan. These included genera such as Schizoriza, Rhombotis, and Cupatesia. Next, let's explore the Ulad Abdun Basin's reptiles. Osepasuchus is the sole crocodilian that has emerged from the sediments and represents Africa's earliest known true crocodilian, which was closely related to modern-day gharials. It would have lounged on the beaches surrounding the seas, and would have perhaps dipped into the ocean itself to pursue fish or small reptiles. Two species of marine turtle coexisted with the lasso titan under these ancient waves too. The bizarre alien Ocellus, a turtle related to modern-day leatherbacks that used its crushing jaw to break into shellfish, and Osepakelon, a gigantic species of prostagid turtle with a nearly meter-long skull that would have aided in sucking small fish and invertebrates into its narrow jaws. Above the waves and on the cliffs and coastlines surrounding the seas flew several species of pterosaur, Aside from the aforementioned Barbaridactylus, a lucky time traveler could have encountered Alcyone and Cymurchia, which lived similar lives to modern seabirds, the majestic Tethy Draco, and the giant Asdarchids, Phosphato Draco, and perhaps Aramborgiania. Seeing these aerial reptilian colossi 
soaring across the open seas, surely would have been one of the most awesome sights in all of prehistory. Some dinosaurs have been unearthed from the basin. Ajnabia, a small lambiosaurine hadrosaur, may have paraded along the shoreline in small herds, where it needed to be wary of Chananisaurus, a predatory abelosaurid related to the likes of Majungosaurus and Carnotaurus. It is entirely possible that encounters between these species and Thalassotitan could have taken place as the dinosaurs paddled across the water in search of new territories or to migrate. One more dinosaur, yet to be fully described, however, existed in the basin. A mysterious species of titanosaur, one of the gigantic sauropods that towered above all other organisms in the Cretaceous period. Time will tell with this species, and hopefully we can soon learn more about it. Mosasaurs have been immortalized on the big screen over the years, and for very good reason. It doesn't take too much digging in paleomedia to come across one. The aforementioned Jurassic World put a mosasaur at center stage as one of the stars of the film. Yet this was not a particularly consistent or accurate depiction of the creature. The BBC's 2003 documentary, Sea Monsters, hosted by Nigel Marvin, gave a much more accurate view of these predators, which were seen whirling and diving in the waves in packs, as the top predators of their ecosystems. Even better was the 2022 rendition of the Mosasaurs from Apple TV Plus's Prehistoric Planet, narrated by Sir David Attenborough, which documented the contrast between Mosasaurs as docile animals and aggressive predators, shown hunting, fighting for territory, and taking sand baths on the sea floor. These majestic creatures have inspired countless paleo artists over the years, and will continue to do so long into the future. It's discoveries like the Lasso Titans, which fuel these amazing creations, and to see these reptiles brought to life in all their terrifying glory is something we are lucky to experience. Thalassotitan may have been a terrifying apex predator, but it was also an animal with its own life, its own likes and dislikes, worries and pastimes. These creatures were much more complex than we give them credit for. And that is what makes prehistory so interesting. Thalassotitan will go down in the annals of prehistory as one of the most remarkable creatures of the weird and wonderful Cretaceous, without a doubt.